I'm moving these chickens over to the main coop where there's a lot more chickens and it's funny to see when we when they've never been on the concrete before and we're moving them from grass to some other grass how they don't even want to step on the concrete they're not sure what's going on here who's gonna be the first one on the concrete couple of them. That's <laughs> so funny. It's lava. They're doing the lava game. Don't stand in the lava. <laughs> hey, all you white birds in the front, you lose because you stepped in the lava. <laughs> You're the winner. Standing up here on the perch was the right idea. mushroom it's turned purple kind of cool um, so that's the spores coming out supposedly these things spread millions of spores but it's very rare that even one spore becomes a mushroom so the odds of having a new mushroom come up are pretty slim I've had some puffball mushrooms that taste really good I tried one here that didn't really work out and I don't know if it's this species or if maybe I just didn't prepare it correctly or something I'm trying to work ahead of the rain it's supposed to be raining today we cut down this tree yesterday and I'm trying to get it all cleaned up I'm using a lot of the wood in the raised beds in the backyard and then some of it's going to future firewood so I might bring the splitter out here and split all this up before I move it because they're pretty heavy. Right now I'm just taking branches down to the field and putting them in the pile for a future fire. What do you think? Do you think it's possible to make an igloo out of branches? Hey Weather Channel, it's not supposed to rain until four o'clock. I don't know what time it is, but it's only something like two. Usually put all this kind of stuff on video. I did show a real quick clip of cutting the one tree out in the yard, but this tree right here, this one, uh, if you remember from videos is, was a really big evergreen tree. And, uh, it was kind of blocking our view from the house. It's really opened it up now where we used to have this big, large green object <laughs> kind of covering the corner of the house. And now it's just open. I almost feel like uh, my blanket is gone. Like I had a, a security blanket out here and <laughs> now it's gone. Also the uh, power company came and cleaned up the trees along these power lines as well as the short trees there were trees anywhere from well there was just brush and then trees going up to maybe 10 feet tall and all that is gone now it's uh it's a lot more open around the house it's also open into those trees you can really see down into those trees now i think we had some deer that would bed down 
kind of over here in the trees, kind of where these swings are. And I don't know, I don't know if they'll still bed down there, out there or not. Grabbing this old tripod and I've got this laser pointer that you just saw with the cat. That's uh, This is meant for pointing out stars and stuff in the sky. Never pointed at an airplane. <laughs> um, so I'm going to use this. I've been wanting to just uh, check out my property line. So I've been wanting to do this for quite a while. And of course the rain is starting again but I might try it anyway so I'm out here at the street and I know that uh, when they did the survey they put that marker in the street looks to me like I'm lined up pretty much on the center of that cedar tree so I set up my tripod on the opposite side and now I'm gonna try to shine it through the woods and see if I can get lined up with the marker that I have down in the woods. So right now I'm shining it down in the woods. I don't know if you can see the beam itself. Yeah, you can. <laughs> That's pretty cool, especially with the rain, the rain going through the beam. You can really see it good when it's shining at you. It kind of looks like I'm way off to the left of where I think it actually should be. I'll get these branches off to kind of help get that thing out of the way. Well, I'm getting rained out. The rain is coming in and lightning, so I'm gonna try this again maybe tomorrow. We haven't talked about it much because it's a very slow project, but we're over here working on a foundation for a house for Caleb. Not a house, it's a garage apartment. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's gonna have a two car garage and a small apartment. We've already had some graders. I'm sure you've seen in some videos that we've had this whole area graded with a bulldozer. And they've built up a pad for the house. Here's a corner stake. And there's the far corner. So right now, Caleb and I are digging trenches for our plumbing. On a slab house, your plumbing is underground underneath the slab. Uh, your main lines that are gonna go out, go out from the house. The septic tank is right about here. So our main drain line is going down to the septic tank here. Um, since it's just a one bathroom, one bedroom apartment, this is the bathroom with the toilet and the tub and everything over here we're digging across to the kitchen sink and so a nice 45 degree day feels like a 75 degree day when you're doing this kind of work <laughs> trying to put my laser out here again this is the corner of the property that i'm trying to get a straight line from here to the street so i'm going to put the laser on this end i couldn't get the laser to go down into the woods very well it was running into so many branches and things that the it just got kind of blocked off. So I'm set up here at this mark. And I'm looking down through the trees. You can see it hitting lots of branches and pine needles and things. Kind of neat to see <laughs> just that laser just touching one little branch or whatever. Now, over here, I'm running dead square into a tree where that's blocking me from going any further. I'm able to see the laser down in the woods down there, and I can see when I'm straight with it or when I'm at an angle to it. So that's helping me to see right where the edge of our line is.
bed that we have mostly filled. One of the new ones. This is one of the old ones that's completely filled. And Cindy's topped off this one, so it's uh, doing really well. But we put loaded it full of wood, put a layer of dirt. Now we're loading it full of wood again. So that's what I'm doing right now. On I've got these two ready for another layer of dirt. And now I'm uh, putting my last couple pieces in this one. I'm going to have to come up with some more stuff for that one. That's the Friday afternoon update on the gardens. I called the last video the best raised beds. And I think these are some of the best raised beds. Um, but I didn't really talk about them. I kind of just showed what I was doing. This is culvert material, which is a pipe that you would bury in the ground to let a creek go through a property or uh, to have a driveway that crosses a little river or creek or something um, or needs a lot of drainage. And I've cut it into segments that are 36 inches tall. So I ordered it the size that I wanted it so that I could get seven beds that were all 36 inches tall. So that 36 inches is like a kitchen counter height. And by doing it at that height, it's very comfortable. Your back is not hurting. Of course, you're not gonna grow really tall tomato plants in here. Um, you just grow those somewhere else. But this will be for herb gardens, um, maybe greens like lettuce, uh, kale, and things like that. Um, but it's a, in permaculture, you would call this zone one. It's your closest garden to your home. This, uh, galvanized steel is, uh, you know, you can see the rust on this edge, maybe. Um, it is a regular steel, but it's coated with a uh, galvanized coating. So where I cut it, I've revealed the steel and you get a tiny bit of rust there. Um, but here it's protected from rust. And these should last 25 years or more. So this, I would call this a lifetime raised bed. You're not gonna have to worry about uh, your wooden raised beds that want to rot and fall apart and have to be rebuilt every two to five years. Um, I think the only thing better than this would be concrete. But what, another nice thing about this is how thin it is if I make a concrete wall, that's keeping me an extra four inches or five inches or six inches away from my garden. This, I could have a plant right here beside my hip. You know, it's, it's so nice and convenient that it's close like that. When you're doing a small garden bed like this, it really does matter um, how much, how close you are and, and how far you can reach. I can lean just a little bit and I can reach the middle of the bed and that's important. If you're familiar with square foot gardening, they make four by four uh, planting areas because you need to be able to reach the center of your garden without walking on it. And that way you don't trample down your soil and make it compacted where it won't grow things. Yeah.